वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल दिस इज ट्रेडी स्टॉम एंड यू आर वाचिंग सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इफ नरुटो एक्सीडेंटली ट्रैप्ड इन अ डायमेंशनल टियर इफ यू एंजॉय दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल नो वेस्टिंग नो मोर टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट द स्टोरी समवन हैड हिडन अ रिपोर्ट अंडर सुनादेस डोर दैट मॉर्निंग एंड शी वाज रीडिंग इट इन हर ऑफिस अलोंग विद अ नोट दैट सेड ही वुड बी इन टच ही हैड ऑलरेडी लेफ्ट टू गो बैक टू द सैंड विलेज इट वाज क्लियर टू सुनादे दैट ही वाज जस्ट ट्राइंग टू अवॉइड गेटिंग अनदर जॉब When she heard three quiet taps, she went back to reading. She yelled, "Come in." But wasn't paying attention. He beat a sound junin with his hands tied behind his back, right? She asked herself, "What has he been doing for the past 4 years?" She saw that it was Shizun when she looked up at the person coming in the door. Shizun said with a smile, "Good morning." Faced with confusion from the Hokage, she replied, "I just got back from my mission." We traveled all night. The boss, Tsunade, looked at her helper. Even though she wasn't hurt, Tsunade could tell she was tired. I don't even like having to send my assistant on missions. Let down by the last group of graduates from the academy. The morning was going to be long. Tsunade asked, "I take it you report success?" "Of course." With Kakashi and Guy, there wasn't much of a chance that we would fail. It was my job to report in. They both went to the hospital to be seen about some minor wounds, Shizun said. Tsunade replied with a nod. It was good that they came back. She told Shizun what happened the night before. Now that I have some manpower back in town, I think we should revisit the council members. Go get some rest and tell Kakashi that I want to see him at 1500. Stress the importance of him being on time, will you? Shizun said, "Yes," and then left. They had been on a mission to protect someone through land that Orochimaru said was his, and Tsunade thought that they were probably tired. There was a good chance they would have to fight to get through. She saw that Naruto was late when she looked at the clock. I knew he wasn't going to be here on time. He is still Naruto, even though he looks older. The sound of a knock on the door broke her train of thought. Come in. Tsunade called out from inside the door, "Come in." The Naruto took a very deep breath. He had been having thoughts about how he could tell them what had happened. The evidence was so clear that it was hard to believe. She had no choice but to believe him. He looked at Kit from below. He opened the door and walked in, saying, "Well, here goes nothing." In the past 4 years, not much had changed. Tsunade was sitting behind her desk, which was as usual full of work. Besides Shizun, who was always there to help her and keep her on task, there was only one difference. It was yet another sign that Konoha was having trouble completing its tasks. "You're late," Tsunade told Naruto, motioning for him to sit down. Kit jumped up on the chair next to him after he agreed. He didn't want to tell her about him. Only by a couple of minutes. "My warm-up got out of hand this morning," he stated. Tsunade looked down and saw that his leg had a bandage on it. It was fully healed by the demon chakra by the evening, so Naruto knew it would be gone. The chakra didn't heal him as quickly as when the Kaiubi was still inside him, but he still healed a lot faster than a normal person. You should be more careful then. I can't afford to have shinobis injuring themselves, Tsunade stated. She crossed her arms over her chest and looked him straight in the eye. Start with Sasuke. Tell me where you have been and then explain why you have a fox following you around. He breathed deeply and dug in. He told her about the work to find Sasuke and how the boy had tried to kill him. He made sure to say that Sasuke broke his neck and pushed Ichidori through his chest. Tsunade was most interested in how Sasuke seemed to have changed. The minutes went by as he talked more about the whole battle, which ended with Ichidori fighting the Rasengan. Now this is where things got tricky. That's when I fell into the chakra tear. The Kaiubi told me that, but someone cut him off. This is what Tsunade asked. You talked to the Kaiubi? Naruto gave a sheepish nod. The next part was going to be really bad for her. Well, I kind of made a deal with him actually. You see, time moved differently in the tear. That's why I look so much older than I should. I've lived 8 years to your 4. The Kaiubi agreed to train me in exchange for a type of freedom. As expected, Tsunade was upset. You made a deal with a demon that destroyed our city. All of a sudden, she seemed to understand what had happened and glared at Kit. Don't worry, lady. He got a good deal," Kit said with a smile. 
Quickly, Tsunade got to her feet. She asked, what have you done? He moved around in his seat. His last words made Kit sound a little hurt. He did what he had to do. I can't do anything in this body but walk around, so don't have a fit. Naruto tried to calm things down by saying, it's okay, Tsunade. Like he said, he has no chakra, so he is like an ordinary fox. I can sense where he is at all times, and he has a vested interest in my survival. His spirit still resides in me. The seal is whole. Tsunade walked across the room and said, let me see. When Naruto took off his shirt, Tsunade used chakra to show the seal on his stomach. She finally agreed after a while. Fine. Perhaps he should stay with me though. He may still be dangerous. Kit yelled, getting ready to leave the room, no way. I trained you for freedom. He was calmed down by Naruto. Tsunade calmed down and then went back to her seat. Kit stays with me. I'll keep my word. After letting out a sigh, she seemed to accept the news and move on. So you trained with the most powerful demon known to man for eight years? She wanted to know. Yes, said Naruto. Well, judging from that information, and the information contained in Shikamaru's report, I am hereby promoting you to the rank of Chunin, she stated. She was taking a deep breath before going on when Naruto jumped out of his chair to celebrate. He danced around the room and screamed, woohoo. Tsunade loudly cleared her throat after a short time. He said, oh, sorry, and then he went back to his seat. Tomorrow, we'll test you for Junin rank. Naruto would have been happy about that too, but he was too shocked. He asked, what? Already? Some of the things Naruto had changed from eight years ago to now was his ability to calm down and listen. Kayubi had made him understand that. Yes. I am assigning you to a mission that leaves tomorrow morning. If you pass, you will be leading the mission. If you don't, which I doubt, then I will have to dig up someone else to lead the mission. Naruto said yes. He asked, what does the test consist of? It took a long time to finish the Chunin test. After all, he was supposed to leave tomorrow, so the Junin test must be very short. You will spar with Kakashi. He will decide if you are fighting at Junin level. During times of peace, the exam is longer and much more involved, but with the war one can't spare the time. I will observe, along with your teammates for the mission, and an assortment of other Junin, she said. Naruto had a lot on his mind. Taking tests for Junin and leaving Konoha in the morning tomorrow? He asked numbly, who will be on my team? Rock Lee and Hayuga Hanada. They both know of your involvement with the Kayubi already, so they are the ideal team members, she stated. I'll tell you about the mission when you're all together. Now leave this room and meet me at the practice field at 7 o'clock for your test. She threw him a Chunin flak jacket. And wear your uniform from now on. I put some forward pay in the pockets, so that you can buy some clothes that fit you. Naruto stood up and put on the jacket. One last question, he said. Where can I find Kiba? Tsunade scrunched up her brow. He is teaching Taijutsu at the academy. Why do you want him? Trading. To begin, Naruto went shopping. He thought about getting Kit a collar for a short time, but decided not to when Kit said he would bite off a finger in the middle of the night. After getting some shurikens and kanai, he went to the clothing stores. Naruto bought a few pairs of standard Konoha blue pants because he decided that orange pants were no longer his thing. A few black tea. Shirts will have his spiral logo sewn on the chest because he told the store to do that. He gave them a lot of money and then left around lunchtime to find Kiba. He found him eating some rice balls quickly in the teacher's lounge. Akamaru, his dog, was sitting next to him. He was a lot bigger than the last time Naruto saw him. Kit and Akamaru both started growling at him right away, before he had even been in the room for two seconds. He put down his food and got up. Who are you, and what are you doing to my do? Was the question on his face. Kiba gave him a big pat on the back and smiled like he was crazy. Naruto? I heard you were back, but I didn't believe it. What brings you to the academy? Naku said, well, I wanted you to teach me something. While Kid and Akamaru had stopped growling, they were still looking at each other in a strange way. The jutsu you used to transform Akamaru into a clone of you, the beast transformation. Kiba quickly replied, no way man, that's a family jutsu. They would kill me if I taught you that. 
Besides, you never used pets before, what's with the fox? I picked him up abroad, Naruto said. Your family doesn't have to know, I won't be using it often. Besides, I think I have something that might make it worth it to you. Kibi asked, what is that? He went up to Akamaru and quickly pulled out one of his hairs. Kiba yelled, hey. But Naruto held up his hand and stopped him. Naruto did three hand seals and slammed his palm on the floor as he walked across the room. Akamaru was taken across the room in a puff of smoke. The Kiba said, whoa. As Naruto tried to sell the simple summoning jutsu, he said, it works over a pretty long distance. It's great for having Akamaru scout and then calling him back to you when trouble comes. After giving it some thought, Kiba said, okay, but don't do it in public so my family can find out I taught you. He led Naruto into the gym and began to explain. He trained for a few hours and then decided he knew everything he needed to know. Getting better at it would only take time. To make the changes to the jutsu, he also needed some privacy. He thanked Kiba and went back to the store to buy clothes. He ran home, grabbed his shirts, and quickly changed into his new chunin uniform. Naruto went to the Ichiraku ramen stand when he had some free time before his junin test. It caught him off guard to see Hanada already eating there. Through the curtains, he was sitting next to her. His words, hey Hanada, caught her off guard. She spit out the drink she was drinking and turned her red face to look at him. Na. Naruto. Kun? She asked out loud. Naruto was shocked and said, I'm sorry, you surprised me. What could he have done to surprise her in public? He didn't have time to think about it because the ramen stand owner came in and stopped him. He asked, did I hear you say Naruto? Naruto gave a nod. He said, it's good to be back. The man yelled, fire up the burners. We're back in the big time. He was so happy that his best customer was back. He changed the subject and said, Hanada here has been keeping us open since you disappeared. Hey. It's been a long time, you look older. Get this man some ramen. On the house this time. Naruto laughed and looked at Hanada instead of the man. I didn't know you liked ramen. I never saw you here before. I, um, never knew it was here until I saw you eating here one day. I tried it, and have been eating here ever since, she said. She took another bite of the noodles in silence. Naruto began, hey, about yesterday. Hanada stopped moving, and half of her noodles fell out of her mouth. Thank you so much for what you said. It meant a lot to me. Hanada turned red again. He thought to himself, this girl is really weird. They didn't say anything for a short time. Naruto gave Kit his first bowl when he was done with it, and Kit licked it clean with great hunger. That made Hanada laugh a little, and she reached down to pet the fox. She said, he's really cute. I bet he thinks of you as a brother. With your condition and all. Naruto cracked up. Yeah, probably something like that. Anyway, I need to go. I have a test for Junin in 20 minutes, he said as he stood up and paid the stand. This is for her meal as a thank you for being open for me, he said with a smile. She then looked up at him. It was finally clear what he meant. She asked, testing for Junin? When she finally saw his jacket, she bowed very deeply. She quickly spat out, sorry, I didn't notice before. Congratulations on your promotion. Stand up. It's okay. Tsunade wanted me to lead a mission tomorrow, so I am getting the fast test. You are supposed to be going with me on the mission. Why don't you come watch the test so you can see some of my new tricks, he said. Hanada eagerly agreed, grabbed her gear, and went with him to the practice field. Naruto was shocked by how many people were on the practice field when he finally got there. The instructors and almost all of the rookie nine had shown up. Tsunade set up some chairs off to the side, and she sat there with Kurenai, Gai, and Shizun. Kakashi was already reading his book in the middle of the field. He thought to himself as he walked out to the field, I can't believe he still reads that trash. He looked down at Kit and told her, stay with Hanada. Don't trip me up. Naruto then walked over to the Hokage and bowed. I am here for the test. Tsunade replied, right on time. You will fight Kakashi. At any point either one of you can call that the match is over. Part of the test is knowing when you were beaten. If we think you were fighting at a Junin level, you will receive the promotion. It's pretty simple really. The Naruto said, that sounds good. 
he went out to the field to see his old teacher. He thought to himself, that's weird that they were almost as tall as me. Kakashi stood there sluggishly, one hand in his pocket and the other on his favorite book. With one good eye, he looked at Naruto. The other eye was covered by his helmet. Kakashi told him, I'm glad you made it back. Naruto just gave a nod. Even though he didn't dislike Kakashi, the man hadn't been very helpful in the past. He had spent more time training Sasuke, his favorite student, because there was no sign that Naruto would be even half as strong. In fact, Kakashi didn't even get to fight when Naruto beat Neji in the Chunin exam. Naruto replied, glad to be back. In a fight stance, he knelt down and cracked his neck on both sides. Wish you hadn't taught Sasuke Chidori though. Kakashi simply replied, my mistake. It made sense at the time. I hear you have had an interesting teacher these last few years. More interesting that you know. Enough talk though, let's get this show on the road. Naruto said proudly. Kakashi agreed and tucked his book away in his pouch. He took out two bells and put them on his behind. Kakashi told him, this time I won't be nice to you. I don't pass people that aren't worth it. You won't have time to worry about keeping the bells from me, Naruto smiled. Quickly moving around, he did the seal sequence for his favorite jutsu. Ten copies of himself formed next to him and got ready to attack Kakashi with, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Kakashi looked at the real Naruto and asked, rushing in still, huh? Naruto didn't answer when he said, that doesn't look good. That's why he asked Kakashi which one was the real him. After taking a step back, he let his clones attack. Kakashi quickly made copies of the seals Naruto had made earlier and made his own shadow copies. Aside from the fight between the two groups of clones, Kakashi flew toward the real Naruto, who was standing still. You need to do better than this. Kakashi yelled as he hit the ball. Naruto got hit in the face with a punch and then vanished in a puff of smoke. It was impossible for that to be a copy. Kakashi thought, I never took my eyes off of him. Naruto could be heard whispering behind him, misinformation is a ninja's most important tool. Kakashi turned around and kicked Naruto in the leg, but Naruto easily avoided the blow. Naruto kicked Kakashi a few times and then pushed him back a few steps. Behind his opponent, Kakashi saw that almost all of the Naruto clones had beaten his own. After they were done, they got in line behind Naruto. Kakashi told him, your clones are amazing, and your taijutsu is strong. Most people think of clones as a distraction. In order for their clones to not give away who the real one is, they have to block like a normal fighter. I don't care if you know which one is the real me, so my clones dodge attacks. Since cage bunshin clones are solid, they are more effective as extra hands than diversions, Naruto said. Now I am going to end this. Kakashi went into a set of hand seals and said, unlikely. Naruto stopped him before he could eat. He closed the gap between them very quickly and started attacking Kakashi. The older man put chakra into his own limbs to make them move as fast as Naruto's. He was almost too focused on this to notice the clones moving around him. It's time to get rid of them. They will be dead after one good hit to the real Naruto. Kakashi jumped up and did a roundhouse kick. He also took a few shurikens out of his pouch at the same time. He let them fly at all the clones and saw one miss its dodge and get hit. Kakashi knew he had his mark when he saw a small amount of blood dripping from his arm. Because he knew the Naruto in front of him was a copy, he kicked it. He was shocked when the clone caught his leg because he thought it would avoid him. It surprised him even more when it didn't turn into smoke. The Naruto said, replacement technique. Naruto smiled and violently pulled Kakashi's leg, dropping him to the ground. He then jumped high into the air. Another Naruto clone held Kakashi down and grabbed him from behind with rough hands. With his mind racing, Kakashi couldn't do anything but watch as another Naruto jumped up and threw the real one so fast that it blocked out the sun. The one who was holding him said, it took me a long time to perfect the replacement technique so that it would work with my Bunshin clones. Now I can switch places with any of them at any time. More clones were now holding Kakashi down, and to say the least, they were very strong. Being held down by clones, the real Naruto curled up into a ball and flew toward Kakashi and the others. Naruto sent chakra out of all of his chakra pores, something he had been doing for years. 
The boy turned himself into a huge Rasengan by spinning the energy around himself. Kakashi was now in a panic. He was pretty much held down by nine clones, and it didn't look like he could get away from the attack. Rasengan Cannonball was what one of Naruto's holding him said. Kakashi yelled and closed his eye, you'll kill me. You win. Naruto said, better move. As the clones that were holding Kakashi down broke apart into smoke. At the last second, Kakashi jumped out of the way with all his strength. The huge Rasengan hit the ground hard and dug a hole deep into it. It was too loud to hear. It stopped after a short time. After a few quiet moments, Naruto finally crawled out of the hole, tired. You pass, Kakashi told him. I want a rematch sometime though. I will use my Sharingan, and then we will see how you cope. He smiled and said, I'm looking forward to it. Then he got up and walked over to Tsunade and the others. When everyone agreed, Tsunade said, by unanimous decision, we bestow the rank of Junin upon you. Gaia then spoke. The fires of youth burned strongly in you Naruto, forging you into a man made of steel. Excellent job. Naruto was happy. He bowed to the judges and then went to his friends. As he left, Tsunade told him, meet in my office in 10 minutes for your mission briefing. Bring Rock Lee and Hanada. With pride, she watched as his friends greeted him with cheers and praise. He was really going to be a great ninja after all, Sakura watched from a tree line far away as Naruto beat Kakashi to end the match. Is he really that strong now? She thought to herself. Her ex. Teammate was taking a test for Junin while she sat on a branch and swung her legs back and forth. She had been thinking about what happened between them last night for a long time. She didn't feel ready to talk to him yet. They were with their friends, and she was interested as he walked over to them and was greeted with cheers. He was going to be the third one to make Junin. Most likely just because he had been away. He went from being at the very bottom of the list to fighting in front of her as a very skilled ninja. She couldn't believe it. She saw him talk to Hanada and Rock Lee and smile without any trouble. Soon after, all three of them left, along with the fox that had been following him. Kakashi asked her from behind, don't you want to talk to him? She was scared enough by his sudden appearance to fall off her branch. She grimaced as she stood up after landing hard on her behind. No, she replied. Kakashi turned his head to the side and sat down next to her. Why not? You were friendly enough when you were on my team. As I recall, he had quite a crush on you, Kakashi stated. Team 7 hadn't done anything in years. Kakashi knew his team was doomed to fail when Sasuke left and Naruto was thought to be dead. Sakura became an apprentice of Tsunade's and Kakashi was left to do missions by himself or with other high level ninjas. Sakura said in a vague way, we already talked about this. He's not the same. Kakashi gave a nod. If by that you mean that he has grown up, then yes. He's had some rough times in his day. You don't know the half of it. Being betrayed by Sasuke probably hurt him the deepest, Kakashi stated. When Sakura heard someone talk about Sasuke, she always tensed up. She said, he didn't betray us. He was tricked. He can still be saved, she was mostly trying to help herself believe it. Kakashi let out a sigh. Sakura, Sasuke isn't coming back. He was tricked, but not how you think. Even the council has agreed that he is at least an A-class missing nin. If seen, he is to be brought back dead or alive. That made her weep. Naruto is back now. We thought we lost him, but we didn't. He came back, stronger than ever, at a time when we need skilled shinobi more than anything. She sobbed, before he left, I told Sasuke I loved him. Naruto said he would bring him back, but neither did, she cried more. She yelled at herself inside for being weak. Kakashi put his hand on her back to make her feel better. Naruto couldn't help what happened. Neither could you. It's stupid to blame him or yourself. Blame me for not being there in time. Blame Orishimaru for tempting him. Blame Sasuke for actually causing this, Kakashi stated. Whatever happened between you and Naruto since his return isn't worth it. Sakura dried her tears. That's right, Kakashi. She was silly to be mad at Naruto. Being selfish, she thought she was the only one who had been lied to. Naruto had a scar on his chest, which made her decide she wouldn't be mad at him for finding Sasuke in his own way. She only had to get to him first. 
If you need to talk, you know where to find me, Kakashi told him as they apart. He was gone in the blink of an eye. Thanks, Kakashi. Sensei, she told the air. The new determination in Sakura's step made her stand up and walk to the Hokage's office. He almost laughed out loud when he saw Kit stuck in Hinata's arms. In the end, Hinata carried the fox all the way to the Hokage's office because he had stopped struggling somewhere along the way. She put him down when they got there, and he ran over to Naruto and hid behind his legs right away. Hinata said with a smile, Kit is such a sweetheart. The two of them looked at each other and knew what the other was thinking. The three ninjas took a seat and got ready for their briefing. Tsunade sucked in her breath and began. First things first. This mission team is under the command of our new Junin, Uzumaki Naruto. Hanada and Rock Lee, you have both been chosen because of your knowledge of his condition. The mission I am assigning to you is considered an A class, she paused and moved through some papers for a while. She went on by getting out a file and some pictures. These were sent to us by Carrier Pigeon two days ago, she said as she leaned back in her chair and gave Naruto the pictures. The Naruto hissed, Sasuke. There was no doubt that the picture showed a small town, most likely on the edge of the fire country. There were a lot of people in the market, but one person stood out. Someone wearing the traditional sound uniform stood with two other sound ninjas on either side of them. It was clear that the person was Sasuke. Naruto growled and threw the pictures to his other two teammates. Tsunade kept giving her report. Accompanying the photograph, was a letter from the head of the town council. Apparently, the sound ninjas have suppressed the town, and are using it as a launching point for other attacks. The letter says that many of the citizens were killed, but a few were left alive to continue farming. She gasped and put her hand to her mouth. Those poor people. Why only send three ninjas? Asked Rock Lee, who had been surprisingly quiet the whole time. Because your job isn't to free the town, she replied. Tsunade pulled a map out of her drawer and laid it out on her desk. Pointing at another town far away, she continued, Jiraiya is stationed here, heading up our intelligence people. My guess is that he already knows about the attack, and is trying to counter, but we haven't heard from him. Your mission is to get in contact with Jiraiya, and help to counter the attacks that Sasuke's group is engaging in. Your secondary mission is to kill Uchiha Sasuke, or take him alive if possible. Keep them busy, and in about three weeks I will have most of my Junins back in from all their missions. We will meet up and liberate the village. Naruto gave a nod. So we're a distraction. To get Sasuke's attention, we need to block his attacks on our territory. We keep him busy until Tsunade gets strong enough to get rid of him for good. He stood up after a while. We leave tomorrow at 8 AM. Meet me at the gates with your packs ready to go. We travel light and quickly. He smiled at Tsunade and said, we will succeed in our mission. Sakura was going to talk to Naruto after he left Tsunade's office. That's the reason she was in the hall. That's why she heard Sasuke's name. Because of this, she chose to pack her bags and follow them. This time, Sasuke would pay attention to her. Someone was going to kill him if he didn't. There was no happiness in the world for Hinata. Her crush on the boy she had looked up to and liked for most of her childhood was found to be alive yesterday. Then she found out he was a hero, a good fighter, and also really hot. She was told today that she would be going on a long mission with him. Right now, she was the only one who was wrong. She had always meant to say something, but she never did. She always meant to do things, but she stayed on the fence and messed everything up. She told herself, I have to do this right. I will do anything to get Naruto to love me because this might be my only chance. She was getting ready for her next mission as she walked home through streets that were almost empty. I can handle it. Naruto can see that I am strong, just like him. In her free time over the past few years, Hanada had spent a lot of time working on both her body and her mind. It was very hard for her to break out of the shell she had built for herself. It looked like her father was never happy with anything she did. In order to stay away from him, she left early every morning and came home late every night. Hayashi never saw how hard she worked out. He had too much to do teaching Hanabi or getting better at Neiji's skills. But today, she had to go home right away to pack. She was shocked to see Hiyashi waiting for her when she walked into the compound. She bowed low and said, Good evening, Dad. She started to walk by him on her way to her room to avoid talking to him. Wait, he told her, and she stopped right away. I've been told you were involved in the coup two days ago. 
he told me. Hanada had a brief thought that her father might have seen something she had done that was good enough to be praised. Those ideas were quickly shot down. You know about the Uzumaki boy now. You must know why I have never approved of your obsession with him. She groaned. Had she been so clear that even her dad saw her? She felt ashamed and looked down at the ground. Her words, I. I don't think there is any. Were cut off. He yelled, you don't think, do you? You belong to the best clan in this village. I won't let you go after demons. His accusation hurt Hanada. She was so mad at him for the first time in her life that she was brave enough to stand up to him. She yelled, he's not a demon. You should be thankful for him. As tears began to form in her eyes. She knew she had done too much because she could see the cold anger in his eyes. She closed her eyes as he raised his hand to hit her. The blow didn't connect. Let me go now, her father said in a scary voice. When Hanada opened her eyes, she saw Neji holding her dad's wrist. He was still wearing his Anbu uniform. Niji told him, you won't hit her. He let go of his uncle's wrist after a moment. Neji didn't think he could win a real fight if it came to that. Ninjas sometimes did what they had to do without first thinking about their own safety. So you also defend him? Hiyashi asked in a cold voice. I defend what is right. Should we be glad that you were on a mission two nights ago? Would you have sided with them? Neji sought answers. Hinata could tell that things were getting out of hand. She spoke up before her father could say something bad about himself. That doesn't matter. I need to pack my things because I'm going on a mission tomorrow. Excuse me. The two men stood up and let her go as she quickly walked down the hall to her room. As she got to her room, she could hear Hiyashi telling Neji not to expect any more training. She shut the door and began to cry. What was I thinking when I talked back to my dad? After a short break, she got herself together and got the things she would need for the trip. She didn't wait around. She didn't want to stay here tonight while her dad was still so mad. She was right behind them as she threw her things out the window. She ran down the street until she met Neji. Thank you, she said, stepping next to him. Niji asked, you feel so sorry for Naruto, don't you? I've never heard you talk back to Hiyashi like that. She just nodded her head. They were more like brother and sister now that they were closer than they were when they were younger. He had changed since Naruto beat him on the Chunin exam. He said, you can stay in my apartment tonight. She said yes. She said, thank you. Naruto thought of Sasuke. As he walked back to his apartment by himself, the name kept going through his mind. It had been eight years since the betrayal, but the pain hadn't really gone away. He got angry every time he thought about it. This time, I won't miss my chance. Don't expect me to back down or be weak. That jerk has hurt this village too much for that. Kit was right behind him. He was aware of what Naruto was likely thinking. He knew a lot about Naruto's mind because he had heard his thoughts for 20 years. It was really important for him to repay that Uchiha jerk. Naruto was working on a new jutsu that looked good, but his body wasn't really up to much right now. When they got to Naruto's apartment, Kit said, can you believe that Hanada girl picked me up? Like a house cat. Naruto didn't answer. He had a lot of things to do. I bet some of those moves surprised Kakashi, she said. Naruto stared off into space and didn't answer. Kit yelled, hey. Once more, Naruto asked, what? Look, I'm busy. He yelled as he threw in a few more shirts. Look, you are going to have to be clear-headed to pull this off. That brat has been training with Orochimaru for four years. You've got experience on him, but he isn't alone, and neither are you, Kit stated. Naruto got angry and sat down. I can't believe what I am hearing. A several thousand year old demon advocating clear thought and looking after my teammates, said Naruto. Got a soft spot for one of them? Hanada huh? She is cute, I will admit that. Kit barked. You should listen to me because I'm several thousand years old. I'm not going to let us die because you are so focused on Sasuke that you get caught off guard. Naruto was usually a pretty happy person. He changed his mood when he thought about Sasuke. He sat down and took a deep breath. Nairo said, you're right. I've never led a team before. I need to do this right. Besides, he might not even still be there when we arrive. 
Rock Lee got up very early. He was thrilled about going on an A. Class mission. Not many Chunin were able to do it. He was really excited about it, and soon he would be able to apply to test for Junin again. When he did it the last time, things were going well until his opponent used Genjutsu to catch him. He would try to do some jutsu on the practice field every once in a while, but nothing ever happened. He went into the kitchen. Good morning, guy. Sensei, Lee told his hero, who was now like a father to him. Like always, Guy was making a big breakfast. He always said that a good breakfast and getting up early made a ninja great. This was one of many things Guy had said that Lee had written down in his notebook. Guy put different kinds of food on Lee's plate and asked, Good morning, Lee. Are you ready for your mission? Lee nodded as he ate greedily. Good. Remember, if you must fight the Sharingan, stare at his feet, and fight with burning passion. If you do these things, you cannot fail. Lee got up from the table and gave Guy a thumbs up. He said, I won't fail Guy. Sensei. Once they were done with breakfast, they went to the practice field to warm up. Naruto was already there, fighting a single clone while his pet fox watched. The fox would calmly follow the fight as it went back and forth. Lee was sure he saw the fox nod every once in a while. In order to get ready to punch his log, Lee did some push. Ups and sit. Ups. He and Guy began sparring together after they had warmed up. Lee always liked sparring with Guy because Guy was the only person who could really beat him at Taijutsu. He hadn't had a chance to fight Naruto yet, but he thought it would happen soon. As usual, they got into a rhythm of punches and kicks, attacks and counterattacks. He thought he heard Naruto say, see you at the gates, but he wasn't paying attention. They fought for a few more minutes before Guy stopped. The bigger man said, enough. It's time to go. I have a meeting with the Hokage. Lee said yes. Running back to his house to get his things, he went to the gate next. It was already gone when Hanada woke up. She quickly dressed and took a shower. After getting her things together, she quickly ate something and ran out the door. As she walked through town, she was glad to see council members who were involved in the coup two days before picking up trash. Two Chunin who had come back were watching over them and yelling at them to work faster. She was glad to see that they were still being punished. Naruto and Lee were already at the gate when she got close to it. When she got there, the first thing she asked was, where is Kit? Because Naruto's pet was missing. Naruto smiled and pointed in the direction of the street. Getting ready for breakfast, he said. His finger caught Hanada's attention, and she saw Kit trotting down the street with a fish in his mouth. She laughed. Somehow, I doubt that he paid for that, said Lee. Soon after, the fish seller came around the corner and started to chase him. I went outside to meet them, and the fox ran faster. That man clearly wanted Naruto to stop the animal by saying, that pest stole my fish. The man knew what was going on when Kit stopped and crouched behind Naruto. The man took a step back when he saw the whisker marks on Naruto's face and said, oh, he's yours. K. Keep it, I don't want any trouble with your fox. Hanada's whole face fell. Some people were still scared of Naruto. They were even more superstitious about him after seeing the fox following him around. She had even heard some people whisper that Kit was the demon. Yes, she had thought about that, but Kit was too cute for that in the end. Naruto reached back into his wallet and said, No, it's okay. I'll pay for it. How much? The man looked at Naruto's full purse and said, Ten. Hanada knew he was lying. You sell them to my family for five, she stated. The man looked at her for a second and then bowed when he recognized her eyes. He was scared and said, Forgive me, Hayuga. Sama. I didn't know you were with him. Don't worry, Hanada, Naruto told her. The man was selling fish. He gave the man a ten. Dollar bill and told him to leave. He turned to Kit and said, I'm used to paying more than everyone else. You need to stop making trouble for me. I thought you were going to hunt for your breakfast. I always knew you were lazy. Hanada was shocked when Kit seemed to understand what was being said and growled at Naruto. She thought to herself, he must be very smart, like Akamaru. She went up to him and slapped him on the head. And then he looked at Naruto. She said, let's go. Yeah, Naruto replied. 
He took his map out of his pack and walked back to the gates to meet Rock Lee. He put the map back in his pack once he was sure he remembered how to get to their first overnight stop. Kit jumped up on Naruto's back after he was done eating his fish. He screamed, let's do this. The three Konoha ninjas were rapidly moving from one tree to the next, on their way to their first team mission. Sasuke saw Naruto's group speed off. With her pack on her back, she slowly walked out of the gates. They weren't in a hurry because she was going to go a different way than them. Instead of going to see Jiraiya, her only goal was to catch Sasuke. Tsunade was in her office and had her head on her desk. I hope they can handle it. Sasuke hasn't been seen since he betrayed his friends. Shizune rushed through the doors right as she was about to fall asleep. The Hokage quickly woke up and yelled, can't you knock? The younger girl said, I'm sorry, Hokage. Sama, but Sakura hasn't shown up for her lesson with me today. It took a lot of work to be the Hokage. Sakura went to Shizune for the more basic lessons in how to be a medic. It's probably no big deal. Kakashi said she had some fight with Naruto, so she is probably just sulking. Give her a few hours, then check her apartment if she still hasn't shown up. Tsunade said, with a sigh. The trip itself didn't go anywhere interesting. Naruto was let down and more than a little annoyed that noise troops hadn't come up against him. He had heard from Rock Lee that when he was on missions, he almost always ran into a few small groups. The days went by quickly, and they talked the whole way. In the past four years, Hanada had really opened up. She now talked like a normal person, though she still stutters sometimes. Naruto would be in charge at night. He would go work on the beast transformation with Kit after the other two were asleep. Kit needed to learn how to help the team if they wanted to fight a lot of high. Level sound ninjas. Naruto was good, but he could only fight two or three at a time. Naruto and Lee would get up early and get ready for the trip on their own for the first few days. Rock Lee would watch Naruto fight a clone every morning, but Naruto no longer fought more than one. Lee had only seen him do more that first morning. Soon, Hanada was getting up early to warm up with the boys as well. The group was pretty close after five days of traveling. Kit had finally given up and agreed to let Hanada carry him around every once in a while. Naruto thought Kit liked it, even though he complained about it every night. Naruto's group got to the village where Jiraiya was supposed to be after six days of travel. The mission was about to start, Okura didn't have to think too hard to figure out which village Sasuke was attacking from. It was mostly a connect the dots game. The more she got close to the next town, the more she found that it had been attacked. She didn't take long to show up. Konoha must have known by now that she had left. Five days had passed. It was almost certain that Tsunade knew where she was going and had probably sent other ninjas to find her. There was a moment when she realized how stupid what she was about to do was, but she decided that this was her only chance to save Sasuke. She took a big breath in. There were trees all around the village where Sasuke was when she saw him. There were some sound ninjas around, but she could see them and didn't think it would be too hard to sneak in. She took off everything that made her look like a ninja while she was on the trip. That way, she could get in and try to blend in with the other people who were still there while she held out. She would talk to Sasuke alone whenever she got the chance. She could tell him that Naruto was going to kill him even if he didn't come back with her. He needed to know to get away. She wasn't sure her hero could handle what Naruto did to Kakashi during his Junin test. It wasn't fair. Naruto had four more years to get better. With practiced ease, Sakura flew through the shadows without being seen. She sat still and waited for the right time. As soon as the path was clear, she charged ahead. She used all of her chakra to climb up the wall outside of town. She was in in less than three seconds. She quickly looked around and decided that no one had seen her. She then walked slowly toward the town center. Sasuke sat in the town hall and talked with some of his employees. He was checking to see if the attacks on the area were going as planned. They were told to leave when Kabuto walked in the door. Kabuto said in a low voice, Haruno Sakura has snuck into the village. The tall man with silver hair adjusted his glasses on the spot while he waited for his master to answer. Sasuke asked, which one is that? Everyone in the room who knew Sasuke would have seen that the voice did not match the body. The one that chased the previous tenant of that body around like a lovesick puppy, Orochimaru. Sama, Kabuto said. 
Then we have caught the wrong animal in our trap. The Kayubi vessel has changed. When I last saw him, he would have rushed right here. Impetuous youth, Sasuke yelled. She can still be of some use. We could use her to lure the boy here, Kabuto said. Sasuke got up and ran his hand across his face. As the hand moved, a genjutsu changed his features back to how they were on his original body. Orochimaru said, let's go see her. He smiled when he thought about seeing Jiraiya again. It was fun to hang out with the old pervert most of the time, but he was never mature. They stood next to him while they waited for the innkeeper. Before he could look for the hermit, they had to book a room where they could stay the night. But he was pretty sure he knew what kind of places to look at in a town this size. The owner of the inn asked, will that be one room or two? Both Naruto and Hanada spoke at the same time. One. Two. One, Naruto said again. He turned to the side and said calmly, you have been sleeping in the same tent with us for the last six days, and if the village is attacked in the night, I want us all in the same room. I don't want you to be ambushed all alone and killed while Lee and I sleep quietly. Hanada gave a nod. She liked being in the same room in secret, but she knew it would be embarrassing for her father to find out. The powerful Hyuga clan was known even to people this far away. But it wouldn't matter in the end. She had more important things to do right now. Naruto watched as his friends got settled in the room. I'm going to look for Jiraiya. You two get settled and set up our room. If you want to go listen around town to find out more about the attacks, that's fine. He left the room, leaving Kit following behind. Kit asked, headed to the hot springs aren't we? After they were out of earshot. Naruto smiled and said, yes, we are. If I know anything about that pervert, it's that he likes to spy on girls. Do some research, my ass. Naruto spent hours looking in every hot spring and bathhouse in the city. He finally won the big prize. Jiraiya sat in the trees and looked down at the girl's bath using some very clever ninja moves. Naruto thought about how to get the legendary ninja's attention and decided that the best way would be to show him what he was up to. Laughing to himself, he crept up to the tree without being seen. He used his jutsu as he walked around to the side closest to the bathhouse. Rasengan quickly cut through a piece of the tree, making it lean dangerously. Jiraiya lost his balance when the tree moved quickly. With some pleasure, Naruto watched as Jiraiya jumped into the hot bathwater. As the women screamed and ran around, they tried to hide before the sexy pervert could see them again. Jiraiya's wet, embarrassed face when he came back to the surface made Naruto laugh out loud. Unfortunately, his fits of laughter made the women also want to talk to him. One of the women yelled, there's another one. Naruto had to stop laughing when a group of half. Naked women started to gather. Jiraiya yelled, let's get out of here. As he shot out of the water. The legendary Senen disappeared into smoke, leaving a path of wet ground behind him. Naruto was following him quickly. Once they were out of there, Jiraiya slowed down to catch his breath. He looked at Naruto and asked, now what was the big idea there? Who are you and why did you? The whisker marks on Naruto's face helped him figure out who the person was. Naruto? Answer. The one and only, Naruto said. Jiraiya let out a loud whoop. I knew you weren't dead. All the others were convinced, but I knew my student couldn't be put down by the likes of Sasuke. You're older than you should be though, Jiraiya stated. Jiraiya was smart, but there were many other things that could be said about him. Is that fox who I think it is? He shrugged and said, yeah. I have a lot to tell you. We're here for a mission. I assume you have the Kayubi under control? It wouldn't be following you around otherwise? Jiraiya wondered. Kit was angry and said, under control? He doesn't have that. I come and go as I please. Yeah, I got him under control. He has been training me for the last eight years. The others don't know about him though, so keep it quiet, said Naruto. Others? You're with a team? Good. I need some help. Some new sound groups have been raiding all along this area. I was hoping Tsunade would send someone, he paused, wait, eight years? As they talked, the two men walked toward the city and got closer to the inn. Naruto talked about the chakra tear. Naruto was proud to say, I'm in charge of the team now. I'm a junin. Tsunade told me she hadn't been in touch with you, Jiraiya said. He stopped when he heard that. Then my messages are being intercepted. This may be more than just raids, Jiraiya stated. 
they may be gearing up for something. If it wasn't my message, then how did you learn of things down here? A council member from the town where Sasuke is leading the sound teams managed to get a letter out by Pigeon, said Naruto. And they got to the inn. Jiraiya was happy to see that it was the same one he had been staying in. Fancy that, our tastes are the same. Anyway, the councilman couldn't have possibly sent out a letter. The people that escaped that city told me all the council were killed to begin with. The letter was probably a lure. This may be a trap, Jiraiya stated. Naruto tapped his door three times softly as the two men came up the stairs. Trap or not, we have to try and bring down Sasuke. This is the first time we have a concrete location on him, Naruto stated. Hanada opened the door. Whoa. Naruto, you didn't tell me you were staying with a girl. And not just any girl. Jiraiya yelled, making Hanada blush. I'm not staying alone with her. Lee is here too. This is my team, said Naruto. Naruto asked, where is Lee anyway? When he saw that Lee wasn't in the room. She bowed deeply to Jiraiya, who then took her hand and kissed it. He went to talk to the villagers about the attacks. We didn't think you would find Jiraiya. Sama so quickly. Lay off, arrow. Senen, Naruto told Hanada as he grabbed her hand. He led her to the other side of the room by putting his arm around her. Pay no attention to arrow. Senen, he is nothing but a pervert. He whispered in her ear. He didn't notice that the touch had turned her about the color of a tomato. Jiraiya yelled, I heard that, Naruto. Hinata was going to pass out. As you might expect, Naruto didn't know what he was doing because he was mad at Jiraiya. Kit could be seen across the room when Hinata sat down on her pallet. He never took his eyes off of her. Kit walked across the room, sat down next to Hinata, and rubbed her legs while the two men argued. She sighed and scratched his ears. Asking the animal sitting next to her in a quiet voice, I wonder if he will ever notice me? She was sure he wouldn't understand. Rock Lee was the first person to figure out something wasn't right. To keep an eye on the area, the town had guards, but Lee thought it looked odd when he saw a group of guards walking into the city. Lee became more and more worried as the men went straight for the town council building while he followed them. He didn't know much about the town's guards, but the people he had talked to seemed pretty sure of them. The town guards had every right to report what they saw to the council, but Lee couldn't get rid of the strange feeling he had about these men. He called out for a child to come forward while still following the men. He asked her as they walked, how would you like to make some money? The kid asked, what can I do, sir? He was excited about the idea. Lee took a handful of cash out of his pocket and showed the kid how to get to their inn. Tell the girl named Hanada, and a blonde man with a pet fox, that Lee might need their help in the council building. Hurry please. Nodded eagerly, the boy left. Lee thought it was time to put his idea to the test. He pretended to be drunk and walked into the men. Almost right away, the men moved quickly and pushed him past them, landing on the ground. They yelled angrily, watch yourself. Lee could see them well from the front at that point. It made sense to him why he thought they were acting strangely. Their clothes were all torn and didn't fit right. One man's uniform had blood that had been washed out too quickly in the heart area. The guards who should have been coming back were not these men. He thought about waiting for Hinata to come because he didn't know if Naruto was back in the room yet. But then he decided that he wouldn't let these men do what they wanted in the council building. Even though he was still drunk, Lee got up from the ground. Moving slowly toward the men again, he saw them tense up. Lee gracefully went from being drunk and not paying attention to what was going on around him to giving someone a quick kick in the face. One person fell to the ground as the weights on Lee's legs hit him in the face. When Lee landed, he heard the sound of metal hitting metal as several kanai and a sound headband fell out of his cloak. I knew it. Lee yelled as he fought off the attacks from the other two men. The person he kicked was slowly rising up. Lee moved like a tornado as he blocked or caught punch after punch. His counterattacks were like surgical strikes that they rarely missed their targets but always hit them. He had to do everything by himself to keep the three men busy. He was relieved to see more members of the town guard arrive. The other guards thought Lee was the attacker because all three of them were wearing guard uniforms, which was a bad thing. Every time Lee tried to attack, the extra men would sometimes jump in with long spears and stop him. As each attack was thrown at the green beast of Konoha, he quickly turned into a green blur. He wouldn't be able to last long like this. 
That's why he was glad his team showed up at that time. He stepped into the area and said, Stop it, you dummies. The green guy is a ninja from Konoha, and those other men are the enemy. He stopped any of the guards who were trying to hit Lee with a few quick blows. Hinata didn't spend any time getting ready to fight. She slid in between Lee and one of the three sound ninjas without stopping her run. She blocked the man's attack with her forearm, then quickly slid her other hand under him and punched him hard in the stomach. The man screamed and jerked backwards while clutching his stomach. Hanada grimaced and smiled happily as the man threw up. She stopped the fight by moving her leg up and giving him a snap kick to the back of the head. On the other front, Naruto had caught one of the ninjas coming from Lee's area. He blocked the other man's attacks with almost no effort, which was almost funny. Naruto played with the man for a while, then grabbed him by the wrist and broke it with a sharp twist. He came up behind the man, wrapped his leg around him, and threw him to the ground. Naruto quickly had the man at his mercy, with his arms tied behind his back. Lee was ready to let loose now that he didn't have to fight anyone else. It was his turn to attack the sound ninja instead of defend himself. The man could fight back for a short time, but Lee's attacks were too strong for him. The Konoha ninjas looked around when the last enemy was out of the way. Not very good, were they? Lee asked. Hinata said, no, they weren't. Of course, she was tired after a fight, but she didn't have to do much this time. These men were genin of a middle to high level, not better. Naruto asked his prisoner, why are you here? While badly twisting his arm behind his back. We are just messengers. The man cried out in pity. Please don't kill me. Naruto told them, pathetic. Jiraiya was telling everyone what was going on, which took their attention away from what Naruto was doing. Hanada walked up to the man who was struggling and asked, what's the message? The sound ninja said, a picture. Orochimaru. Sama said it was for someone named Naruto. Orochimaru? Jiraiya asked as he walked in on the questioning. He asked, what about Sasuke? The sound ninja laughed and asked, is he still in the area? He said, yes, just look at the message. It's in my front pocket. Araya looked through his pockets while Naruto held him up. Ya Raya's face fell as he took the picture. He turned it over to show Naruto. Naruto called out, Sakura. The picture showed her being spanked and tied up. She had big cuts on her face. Naruto got very angry, which wasn't something he usually did. He said, Orochimaru said he would kill her if you didn't come. Naruto put the man out of his misery with a powerful punch. He was filled with a burning anger. There was no need for that, Jiraiya said. Yes it was, Hanada told Naruto, which made him feel a little better. He deserved it. Lee, who was also clearly upset by the picture, asked, what's the plan now? Without stopping to think, Naruto said, I'm going. I'm going to save her and make them pay. I may not be as powerful as Orochimaru by myself, but I have a certain advantage. I also have to pay back Sasuke. Jiraiya said, wait a minute. This is a clear trap. I don't abandon my friends. I don't know what she was doing there, but I have to save her. You guys don't have to come, said Naruto. Lee yelled, I'm in. Sakura. San needs saving, and the green beast of Konoha cannot simply allow her to suffer. I'm going. A ninja doesn't abandon her teammates, even if they are marching into a trap, said Hanada. Jiraiya let out a sigh of defeat. It was clear that Jiraiya couldn't stop the kids from going. Well, I can't let you go alone. If Orochimaru is really there, you will need me anyway, he said. However, we are going to get some sleep right now. Let's tie these guys up and turn them in. We can leave early in the morning, she was unable to sleep. When she had a big job the next day, she always did this. It just so happened that she was going to die tomorrow. Orochimaru killed the third Hokage, she knew that. She also knew that Uchiha Sasuke was the best ninja in her class. With both of them going on at once, she probably wasn't going to make it. She could still help though, and it didn't matter if she died doing it. There were times when being a ninja was hard. She rolled over on her back on the pallet and looked around. It would take most people a few minutes to get used to it, but her clan's eyes did it faster than the Byakugan. She could see very well in less than 30 seconds. It was easy to see that Naruto wasn't there. She got to her feet in silence. Kit was also gone, or she couldn't find the little animal. 
I wish I knew if he left without us. She thought about it. We will have to help him. He can't do it by himself. Without making a sound, she opened the door and walked out into the hall. Voices from outside the building could be heard coming in. She knew which one was Naruto's but not which one it was. She strained her ears to hear as she hurried down the stairs. Don't worry about that girl. She's only going to cause trouble, the voice said. It was hard for her to understand what was being said. He replied, I know that. I got over her years ago. Hanada stopped when she thought she was close enough to hear but not close enough to be seen. The other voice said, you should look into that Hanada girl. She would give you some strong pups. Hanada got a very red face. What does he mean? What do they have to say about me? She was curious. She was excited to hear what Naruto had to say. Part of her felt bad for listening in, but she was also eager to hear what was being said next. I'm not interested in, pups, just yet. She is a nice girl though, and pretty, said Naruto. Hanada's voice was full of joy. She was happy with that. At some point, she felt the need to cut them off and hoped they didn't think she heard everything. As she walked out the door, she made a lot of noise as she went down the stairs. Faking a yawn, she said, there you are. I thought you had left without us. She had been working hard the last week at talking to Naruto without stuttering. Naruto smiled and looked up at her. As Hinata looked for the other person she had heard talking, she got a confused look on her face. He asked, how much did you hear? Adamantly, Hinata said, no. Nothing. Hinata is so stupid. He's a Junin. He knew you could hear him, of course. In that case, why did he keep talking? How did you know? His voice was tense as he asked, come on. I'm not mad. You're looking for whoever I was talking to just now. How long were you listening? Not long. Just what you said about me, she finally got out, face red. Good, he sighed. He seems to be happy. That sounds like something he wouldn't want me to hear, she thought. Before, what did they talk about? She got brave by sitting down next to him. Who were you talking to? After she asked, Naruto seemed to think for a moment, as if he wasn't sure if he should tell her. His surprise by opening his mouth and talking, though, made Kit make the choice for him. Me, the fox answered. Hanada quickly felt a lot of different emotions. Surprise was the first one that came to mind. Second, she was mad that no one had told her Kit could talk. Next was the state she was in most of the time, embarrassed. In her mind, she went over everything she had ever told the fox. She asked, do you understand everything I say? Of course, Kit answered. I can't believe you humans are so slow to put this together. You knew I was sealed with Naruto, and yet it didn't even cross your mind that the fox following him around could be me. The girl asked, Kayubi? Yes, of course it is. Naruto must have found a way to let him go where he pleased. She said out loud, for a demon, you're not as bad as people in the village think you are. Don't let him fool you. If he was in his normal body you wouldn't have even had a chance to talk to him. He probably would have killed you. Since he is mostly powerless, he has mellowed out a little, Naruto stated. Still, he is a real smart ass sometimes. Kit got a small pat on the head from Hinata as she laughed. What a cute little demon he is though. Kit barked and walked into the building, mumbling something about one day being all powerful again. She laughed and put her hands behind her back. She was having a great time until she thought about what was going on. She was sitting outside by herself with Naruto. She felt butterflies in her stomach all of a sudden. Naruto said in a sad voice, I'm worried about this rescue mission tomorrow. He seemed very upset about something, she could tell. There were lines of worry on Naruto's face right now. Usually, he was happy and sure of himself. I'm scared before all my missions, she said to be helpful. They always get done though. Hanada, this isn't just a mission. This is personal, and it's a trap. I didn't want to get you involved in it. I don't think I would ever forgive myself if you or Lee died, said Naruto. Even though she already knew it would be hard, hearing Naruto say it made her worry even more. Why didn't you leave without us tonight? I thought you had when I woke up and you were gone, she inquired. Naruto laughed out loud at that. I thought about it. I almost did actually, but Kit talked me out of it, he stated. 
He said that we would need you guys, and that we couldn't do it by ourselves. He is right of course. Alone, I would just get myself killed, and Kid is very adamant about me not doing that. Hanada let out a sigh and looked up at the stars. Naruto laughed out loud when he heard that. I don't want you to die either. I just got you back. When he finally pointed out one of her mistakes, she felt terrible when he pushed her. You just got me back? He asked with a laugh. She quickly turned her face away from his to hide the blush that showed she agreed with what he said. When she felt ready, she chose now to be the best time to tell him. She said in a weak voice, I need to tell you something. Hinata, you need to say it. Before you kill yourself tomorrow, he needs to know. When she turned to look at him, she was glad to see that he was hot too. Her mind went to the idea that he might be shy about this kind of thing. He's always so sure of himself. I'm sorry, but Jiraiya loudly burst out the doors before she could finish telling him she loved him in secret. What's going on out here? When the two younger ninjas quickly turned their heads, they saw Jiraiya, who was big, drunk, and intimidating. Arrow. Senen. What are you doing drinking tonight? We need you tomorrow. Naruto cried out. The renowned ninja said in a slur, I'll be fine in the morning. I am an expert at this kind of thing. Naruto turned to face Hanada and said, we can talk again tomorrow after the mission. You should get some sleep. He then grabbed Jiraiya by the arms and led him up the stairs to his room, leaving Hanada to sit on the porch by herself. She was still scared about the mission, but she was more scared about what would happen afterward. Naruto got up before he usually does. Today was a big day. He went downstairs to get breakfast and then did his warm. Ups outside before dawn. He was done in no time with some forms he had already practiced and some push. Ups. He didn't want to push himself today because he knew it would take all of his chakra to do so. He went to Jiraiya's door after eating breakfast. Naruto didn't knock because he wanted to get back at his old sensei for interrupting him last night. Naruto rushed into the room, did a few quick seals, and then used a small amount of water jutsu on Jiraiya's face to wake him up right away. Jiraiya yelled, what was that for? Wrong time, and drinking before the mission, Naruto told them straight out. To begin, Jiraiya said, well I wasn't going to, but there were these ladies. Naruto didn't pay attention as the older ninja talked about the wild night before. He wasn't drunk, at least. After getting everyone else awake, Naruto paid at the front desk. The group was ready to go in no time. They left right after dawn. When Naruto saw the town, he didn't even stop walking. If you can call it a plan, his idea was to rush into town and disable as many sound ninjas as possible before they could set off their trap. That way, they might be able to narrow the field to just the strong ninjas. His team split up, and they all went in different directions to get to the middle of town. Naruto was a powerful person who could make many shadow clones. He sped into town at high speed and didn't even stop to fight any lower. Level Sound Ninjas He made two copies of each enemy he faced and then moved on, trusting the copies to take care of things. He thought things were going well because the sound ninjas were making sounds of pain as they moved away. Just as well, Jiraiya was working hard. He killed each challenger with one or two simple moves when he wasn't making shadow clones. He was a showy ninja most of the time, but today he didn't have time for scum. If Orochimaru was involved, that was one of the few times he would really mean it. The two of them mostly worked together as they came into town from a different direction. When they were together, they went in and out of the sound ninjas and didn't really run into many that were tough. Not long after, they ran into two sound ninjas who weren't easy to get past. The sound ninjas pushed them to their limits, and they fought hard. As the battle went on, they were split up. Naruto was the first person to get to the town center. Jiraiya was right behind him. The sounds of fighting could be heard far away by Sakura. That meant Naruto had come to save her, she knew. It hurt her to laugh to herself. She knew that most of her ribs were broken because she was a medical ninja. She also thought that she might be bleeding inside. It's likely that her face would never heal completely. She was really stupid. He should have just left me here to die. I earned it. As the salt touched her face, tears came out of her eyes and burned. Most of the day before, she tried to send Chakra to some of the wounds to help them heal, but every time they got better, Kabuto would cut her again. The body of Sasuke was lying below her. 
As she thought about it now, she should have known why Orochimaru was so interested in him. He was a skilled ninja with a great family tree, which was one of the things that made her like him at first, but Orochimaru didn't want a subordinate who could become stronger than him one day. At first, she didn't want to believe what he said, but Kabuto had gone to great lengths to explain the form of body possession. He liked this kind of torture because it broke her spirit as well as her body. Look at him come. Orochimaru called out. He asked with a laugh, who should I greet him as? The Kabuto laughed. Jiraiya is with him. Better be yourself for now. It will be nice to see the shock on the old ninja's face when you activate your Sharingan. Orochimaru stood up and used the Genjutsu that made him look like his old body to wrap himself in a shield. She took a deep breath of fear as he raised his hand and said, I would love to let you watch as I kill these people, but your usefulness is almost at an end. No, I won't kill you yet, but I can't let you ruin my surprises for me, he said with a grin. There was nothing there when the fist hit the ground. Jiraiya came around the corner just in time to see Orochimaru knock Sakura out. He quickly looked around and saw that Naruto and Kit were the only ones there. I'll take care of Orochimaru, and you should take care of Kabuto. Naruto looked Kabuto in the eyes and gave him a grim nod. They went in a circle, and Jiraiya walked calmly toward his old friend. Jiraiya, it's been a while, Orochimaru said in a sweet voice. I'm not here to talk, Snake. I'm here to kill you, once and for all, Jiraiya said. Last time I was drugged. This time I will finish things. Orochimaru laughed and said, last time, I didn't have any arms. What gives you the idea that you have a chance? You were never my equal. All of a sudden, Orochimaru was moving quickly. He went from being in front of Jiraiya to being behind him with a kanai in his back in an instant. The Orochimaru laughed. Come on now, don't play with me. Uriah's shape, which Orochimaru had stabbed, turned into a dark, swampy substance. He felt a thick liquid gather at his feet and start to swallow him up. Uriah stepped out from where he had gotten away from Orochimaru's first move and said, let's both be serious, shall we? Orochimaru made some hand seals and quickly spat out a few fireballs. He had to quickly move out of the way, and the swamp jutsu he was using to hold Orochimaru in place was let go. As Orochimaru moved forward, he started a brutal attack with straight taijutsu. You were always slower than me, Orochimaru told Jiraiya as he hit him hard. Well, times change, Jiraiya said with his teeth clenched. The older man grabbed one of Orochimaru's punches, rolled him over on his back, and threw him into the next building. The building fell on top of the snake senin with a loud crash. Jiraiya got up, his lungs burning from all the work. As Orochimaru got up and dusted himself off, laughter broke out from the ruins. Orochimaru spoke as he walked toward the other senin. I'm tired of this game. I want the Kayubi vessel. It's going to give me great pleasure to extinguish you. Not likely, Jiraiya answered. A lot of hand seals were made by him. Jiraiya slammed his palms down on the ground and watched as, in the blink of an eye, his chakra spread across the empty space. He got down on his knees. The scared Orochimaru asked, what is this? I can't move. She said, I'm going to finish this. With one hand off the ground, he made a seal with just one hand. Swamp of a hundred deaths. The ground under Orochimaru slowly turned into a swamp, pulling him in. The pale. Faced man couldn't get away because he couldn't move. When the swamp began to boil, Jiraiya smiled happily as he saw the heat rays blur his vision. The Orochimaru screamed. Jiraiya changed the hand seal after his opponent had sunk all the way to the ground. The swamp then turned into glass. After getting up, he walked over to where his opponent had been. He felt bad when he looked down and saw that Orochimaru wasn't where he should be. Instead, there was a pile of mud there. When he turned around, he saw Orochimaru standing almost where he had been before. But something was not right. Instead of being yellow, his eyes were a bright blood red. Jiraiya let out a sharp breath when he realized what he was up against. He said in a whisper, Sharingan. He was surprised that he couldn't move when he tried to move quickly. Orochimaru lifted one hand off the ground and made the same seal that Jiraiya had just made. You see, Jiraiya, I have finally done it. I have found the perfect body, he said. Jiraiya yelled, you jerk. Jiraiya felt pain as the ground below him turned into a boiling pit of sludge. You're too old. 
What did you call this technique, Swamp of a Hundred Deaths? As the pain got close to his knees, he passed out. Kabuto made fun of Naruto by saying, we meet again Naruto. Kun. You're older. He wasn't feeling well. I hope this doesn't bother you, but please call me Naruto. Sama. Any other use of my name would be rude. Naruto pulled out a few kanai from his pouch. He threw them to see how they would do. The projectiles didn't seem to bother Kabuto. Kabuto used blue chakra to cover his hands and cut the kanai into pieces as they came in. Naruto made a face. What a waste of chakra. Completely unlike your cage bunshin that are running all over town keeping our genins occupied? Replied Kabuto. The only difference is that I have extra chakra and you don't. Naruto rushed into close combat and hit Kabuto with a series of kicks and punches to see how well he could defend himself. I beat you when I was genin, don't think I can't destroy you now. Naruto was able to push Kabuto back while he laughed. He took a kanai from his pouch and threw it at Sakura after a few blocks. He jumped back and quickly made a seal with his hands. By putting some copies in front of the projectile, he was able to slow it down just enough for it to miss its mark. Why save her? She got herself into this mess. You know she walked right in here to warn her precious Sasuke. Kun, right? Kabuto stated. Something like that was what Naruto thought it was, but hearing it still hurt. He made up his mind to focus on something else. Naruto asked as he launched another attack, where is Sasuke anyway? He should be more than ready to fight me. Were you sending him to fight Lee and Hinata? Kabuto laughed and said, oh no, your friend Sasuke is right over there. Following the other man's finger, Naruto saw Jiraiya fighting Orochimaru. He was really confused at this point. Kabuto told Naruto, you should be paying attention. As he kicked him hard in the gut. As Naruto fell back, he rolled over. As soon as he got back on his feet, he made some shadow clones, and the three of them attacked together. As soon as Kabuto hit one of the clones, Naruto switched places with them to block the attack. Kabuto ran away because he didn't know which Naruto was the real one. Kabuto's hands were covered in blue chakra again, and he started a series of counterattacks. When Naruto learned that the chakra meant scalpels, he had no choice but to let his clones take the hits. Naruto felt the familiar touch of the Kyubi power as he poured chakra into his body. As he got ready to fight Kabuto with all his might, time seemed to slow down. He hadn't fought someone this good in a long time. The fact that Naruto got better caught Kakashi off guard, but Kabuto seemed to be able to handle the attacks no matter what. Naruto even thought he might not be quite ready yet. Naruto stepped under one of Kabuto's kicks as he rushed forward. He then flew up and hit the other ninja with his own attack, knocking him to the ground. Naruto growled as he flew at Kabuto and hit him in the chest with his palm. Kabuto flew back and rolled around on the ground, making a lot of dust. Kabuto stopped rolling when he sank his chakra scalpels into the ground. Kabuto was happy to see that his own jutsu had frozen Jiraiya during the fight between his master and the other man. And then Kabuto threw several kanai at Sakura again and said, my job is done here. Sasuke would like to play with you now. Naruto jumped in between them and did some amazing acrobatics to grab or kick a few of them out of the way. He felt ashamed that one had gotten by him, so he began to make hand seals. He stopped in the middle when Kit flew through the air and caught the kanai. Kit spit out the kanai and said, don't thank me. I just didn't want you all to be sad for the rest of the fight. I would rather have let her die myself. When Naruto turned around again, he saw that Kabuto had run away. He could hear Jiraiya scream. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.